the next step is finding standard uncertainties of the input quantities. And we will now look at all the input quantities that we had in our model one by one. And the first input quantity is absorbance of the sample solution. And as we saw previously when we looked at uncertainty sources, there are three main uncertainty sources to this input quantity. Repeatability of the photometric reading, possible drift of the photometric properties, and also possible chemical interferences which can come either by increased absorbance because some other compounds also absorb at the used wavelength or by decreased absorbance because something causes the dye either not to form or to little bit partially decompose. And here the standard uncertainties corresponding to those uncertainty sources are presented. The repeatability standard uncertainty can be easily determined in the laboratory just by measuring repeatedly absorbance of the same solution over few hours of time. But of course, each time the spectrophotometer cell with the solution should be inserted again and then removed. Now, the drift uncertainty can likewise be determined in the laboratory, but also it sometimes can be found in the documentation of the spectrophotometer. And what can be said here is that these values correspond to quite safe estimates for contemporary, normal, usual routine spectrophotometers. Now, this uncertainty due to the chemical interferences, this is more difficult to estimate. And actually, this estimate can only come by experience from the laboratory unless extensive scientific research is undertaken. In the case of ammonium determination in most samples, we have found that this uncertainty estimate, 0.003 absorbance units, is fairly useful for the uh, concentration range that is currently under investigation. And now, since all these uncertainty components are related to the same quantity, expressed in the units of that same quantity and also expressed as standard uncertainties, we can simply combine them using the squared summing rule, which we have seen already previously. We square all the components, sum them up, take square root, and find that the combined standard uncertainty of absorbance of the sample solution is 0.0034 absorbance units. The next input quantities are the intercept and slope of the calibration line, B0 and B1. And here we take an approximate solution or an approximate approach. We estimate the standard uncertainties of these two input quantities as simple standard deviations of those quantities as found by regression data analysis. So that their standard uncertainties are given here. And now what does this approximation mean? It means two things. On one hand, it takes into account only the random effects that are evident in these quantities, meaning possible systematic effects will be rejected. However, usually such systematic effects in calibration graphs, if they are correctly made, are quite small. Nevertheless, we slightly underestimate uncertainty. On the other hand, all the equations that we are looking at, and in particular the equation that comes at the end for calculating the combined standard uncertainty of our measurement, they assume non-correlating input quantities. Now, slope and intercept of the same calibration line are always slightly correlated. But this correlation is a negative correlation, meaning if one of them becomes higher, then the other one becomes lower. And if a negative correlation is left out of consideration, then we slightly overestimate the uncertainty. So we, on one hand, somewhat underestimate measurement uncertainty. On the other hand, we somewhat overestimate measurement uncertainty. 
And these two effects largely cancel, resulting in a very realistic uncertainty estimate. The next input quantity is the dilution factor. And dilution factor is nothing else than ratio of different volumes. In our case, 50 to 40 ratio, resulting in a dilution factor value 1.25. And in this case, we will not look in detail at all the volumetric operations, because as we will discover later on, the volumetric uncertainty in this uncertainty budget is not very significant. Instead, we take a rather safe and very effective approach. We estimate the standard uncertainty of dilution factor as 0.5% of the dilution factor value. As we found, according to the experience from our laboratory, this is almost always a very suitable uncertainty estimate if volumetric operations are performed correctly. So that the dilution factor standard uncertainty will be 0.5% from 1.25, meaning 0.0063. And it is a unitless quantity. The next input quantity is the delta CDC. As we saw, this input quantity is meant for taking into account possible decomposition of ammonia or possible contamination of the sample or the solution. I stress here the word possible because it can well be that there's neither contamination nor decomposition. But since we do not exactly know, we have to take this possible effect into account as an uncertainty. And this uncertainty, unless serious scientific research is carried out, cannot be easily rigorously estimated. So that again, we have to use a value which is based on long-term experience. And at this concentration level, it has been found that 0.004 milligrams per liter as standard uncertainty is a very suitable estimate for normal, usual conditions of ammonium determination. Now we have found the standard uncertainties of all the input quantities, and this slide demonstrates the summary of this. We now have all values and all standard uncertainties, and we now can proceed with uncertainty estimation.